Hello and welcome back. I'm Randy Newbert from Voodoo Effects. Today we're going to talk about circuit boards. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about circuit boards. Circuit boards come in many different forms. They could be as simple as a standard driver board or as sophisticated as an Arduino system, which can control multiple LEDs and do multiple features and functions. So today we're going to be basically going over a standard LED driver board. These are boards that we have here. We use them in many applications and they're made to safely drive uh, however many designated LEDs you want to run. Uh, they come in a few different forms. One is a 12 port, one is a 24 port, and we have them as small as a four port. And so let me get onto the bench cam and let's show you how I'm going to solder one up and make up the board. Okay, so this is the 12 port driver board. And if you can see closely on this board, it consists of 12 ports. There, um, there's a switch pad over here in the upper left hand corner which is these two small holes that are indicated in there with one square hole that is a mounting hole but right below it is a positive or voltage plus this is where your positive side of your LED would go into down below here is the negative side and this is where the ground wire or negative wire would go to complete the circuit and uh, make all the LEDs come on. Now, it's very important that you have the switch port on the top here either wired or jumped in order to cross over the circuit so you complete the circuit. Um, this is how we turn it on and off. On the, on the far side here, over on this side, we have the outside or the output side and this will control the power through the front side here and bring it over to this side which can be continued on to another device or wherever you need power that's going to be going outside of this side of the board so this is pot this is power in master power in on this side master power out on that side and again you can see that it's the positive on the top here and the negative line on the bottom so now this board requires resistors in order to operate because we don't want to put nine volts of direct power through this um, we will destroy the led if we don't have a resistor against it so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to assemble two of these here i have a standard filament resistor and I'm going to basically I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the first port now as you can see on here that the larger pads are marked as square and there'll be a circle and the square side here is indicated as plus or positive and the other side is ground and you can even see where it's connected to the ground lead uh, that runs through the whole circuit board itself. So what we that's where the LED will be. Right next to the port is your basically your um, this is where you would lay your resistor at. So this is the resistor port across here. So in this case it just goes straight down the line and this is how you, you know you basically you're gonna put your resistors here your LED connections will go there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install one of the resistors. What I do is I bend it over like this and then I'm going to send it through the board and I'm going to go through the resistor port and I'm going to send it in like that. Sorry, I'm out of frame there. And then I'm going to just bend it over a little bit on each side. Now on most circuit boards, no matter where you get one, um, and regardless of whose kind it is or what kind it is, usually most of the time the soldering is done on the back side of the board. So what I've done here is I've installed 
the resistor and I'll stand on the edge so you can see it a little better and it's going to go through there and then what I've done is I've bent over the leads uh, on the back side of the board and this is where it gets a little tricky when you're doing soldering so what you want to be very careful about is you don't want to bridge the solder over to the next pad so it's very crucial that you stay very close and you know keep your solder from leaking over onto the other port otherwise it'll clog the port then you can't put your wire through or your led connection through there so i'm going to use my helping hams i'm going to get this back up on here and get myself in frame a little bit so everybody can see it and then i'm going to go ahead and my soldering iron it should be warm at this stage and i'm going to go ahead and make the joint up and solder it so what again what i do and what i've shown before in the soldering is you're going to take a little dab of solder and you're going to apply it onto once it heats up on there and that's all you need and again i'm staying very careful to not bridge the connection point and that is what it would look like with a good soldered joint and that's the way it would look that's how you solder through on the driver board then you go on the other side you can see where now it's hard mounted and this will protect the first port uh, for an LED to be hooked up and again this would go all the way down the line through each one and then it jumps to one side and goes over to the other and you'd start off with the resistor up here and again paying attention that these two ports right here the small little circular ports need to be um, bridged or hooked up with the on and off switch in order to complete the circuit so you must have this set up in order to have the power on the positive and the negative flow through the circuit and continue along and again it's one of those things that i'm going to nip off these little small ends with my side cutters and that's pretty much it for how you want to send a resistor through this 12 port driver board and this kind of applies from most applications when you're using a circuit board is most of the soldering is going to be done on the back side of the board you have to be very careful not to bridge over on any other uh, pads you want to make sure that the solder stays connected to those those singular points and uh, I think what I'll do is let me jump back here and I'll, I'll do a little shot with the um, hooking up a 9 volt uh, set up with a battery and uh, installing uh, the switch so here let me go back to this and I'll be right back okay so we're back here now getting ready to make the connection we've already went through the application of putting the resistor on the board and now we're going to hook up the power and we're going to hook up a switch or in this case for test purposes i'm going to put a jumper inside the switch port so i have here a nine volt standard nine volt battery snap i'm going to put this inside the circuit board itself and I'm going to run the leads up and I there's a small mounting hole that's on the circuit itself which allows me to get a good tight grip on the part and that way I can solder it up so I'm going to put that on there I'm going to put this down on the pad I'm going to make sure that I got my connection point on the top Again, I'm going to pull this back a little bit, so hopefully they'll be seen pretty good here in this video. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder the positive side on. And you can see on the positive side, you can see the two pads uh, clearly. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little more here and see if you can see the actual pad itself might be a little bit blurry let me back up here so in this case you can see the two pads right there and there I just soldered the positive side
but there's the switch pad and unless that area is bridged between these two it cannot transfer the positive power over to this run this run for the pow a positive side so you must connect this so in this case I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna connect my minus side I'm gonna slide this through the port and you might want to strip these back just a little more if you're going to put this together like that and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send the little small negative side through I'm gonna pinch it down one more time now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna solder that one joint and that's done and now I have both my leads hooked up and this is the way they should look and the reason why I came up the backside like this is so I make a good strong connection and I don't have to worry about the 9 volt moving around and pulling it through so I use that little mounting hole as kind of a place to um, hold it down so it doesn't so it doesn't jump out of the pads here if you leave it loose on the top and you pull the pads back and forth they tend to over time they'll they'll pull these joints apart and they'll just split so you want to try to avoid that now I basically have got that in there now I have to make up the switch so in this case if you can imagine this being the switch um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a jumper pin in here and what I've done is I've made a little jumper pin from the cutoff excess of the resistor lead and what this is gonna do is this is gonna create this is gonna basically gonna close the circuit up here and make it so the power can flow through the positive up and over the top of this wire and go back into the positive side of the uh, supply lines there so we're gonna go ahead and solder that one in place and to get a little solder on there and this one's gonna be chopped down I'll cut the little pads off there little pieces of excess so there's the jumper assembly all put together and then now it's a complete circuit so I'm gonna grab one LED and just bear with me here it's gonna take a sec and in this case instead of thinking that it's you know it's gonna be hand wired together with you know by being wired let me back up here just a little bit okay so in this case I've got a five millimeter white LED and it again uh, the positive side is the long lead the negative side is the ground lead so I'm gonna bend this in place and I'm just gonna just put it in here for test purposes and remember the positive side is the square on this application and they're usually they're usually in the diagrams as well so you can see where that is in the diagram but I'm just gonna loosely fit that in there I'm gonna bend the leads back just a little bit like that so then that way you can you know it's it's strong and I'm what I'm gonna do in, in order to get it straight if you're gonna go for just a board application what I always like to do is I'll just tack one side down with solder and I'll come back and then that way if say if it's off a little bit I, I need it to actually go somewhere or be in a different spot in this case I'm just gonna try to center it off on here it gives you a little bit of adjustment to move it back and forth and that really works out good when you're trying to get a certain kind of alignment on the LED and go I'm gonna solder the other side and basically I'm going to inspect the joint and I'm going to take a good look at it I'm going to make sure that I don't have any bridge spots it's very common is bridging the pad uh, will ground it and not work so basically that is a setup for one LED now I'm going to go ahead and grab a 9 volt battery and I'm going to run it through a test and since I have the switch already hardwired, I'm just going to turn it on. 
Oh, and in this case, it's actually a red LED. I'm sorry, I thought it was a white LED, but it's a red. And so there you go. So now the circuit's complete. The light's on. You know, if I unsnap it from the snap, it's going to go off. And that's basically how this circuit works, um, or this circuit board application. And it's very, it's actually very easy to use. Uh, people get very confused about how the application's done, but that is the basic application on how you would solder a circuit board. And this is a very basic system. And you know, we we sell these with most of our kits, um, but that's how you wire up a circuit board. And I'm going to have a couple diagrams here. I'm going to show a couple different kind of applications of different kinds of boards, but that's basically how you do it. So let's move on to here and let's go on to the next phase. Okay, so the final wrap on this circuit board tutorial is uh, the best thing I can say is don't be afraid of circuit boards. Circuit boards can be very, very helpful for many applications. They're actually very simple to put together once you get your soldering skills down and you're able to uh, actually connect a good solid solder joint. Um, so don't be afraid of it. It actually, the application is, is relatively easy. And um, there's a lot of good circuit boards out there made by a lot of different companies. The technology is always changing. So it's good to stay up to date with everything that's happening in that area. And I try my best to stay on top of that. Um, I'm very happy with the Arduino system. This is a very uh, open source application. Uh, it can be programmed uh, very easily by a user with a little bit of training and a little bit of background in it. And uh, you could actually write your own programming uh, if you want to dive in on that end as well. Uh, that's why we are definitely uh, inching closer and closer to using a full Arduino system without using, um, uh, you know, like some kind of a older PIC system or, uh, you know, these the programs that are already burned into the chips. We prefer using the application because it's easy to swap. Um, and again, it's user programmable. So anyways, to the next video, uh, please subscribe and uh, leave any comments that you like. And we'll see you on the next video.